In this Big O2 exercise, we're asked to do the same thing as Big O1, and that is to write out the O, the Big O notation for all of these examples, A, B, C, and so on. We're going to look at A first. We have a few statements, like this one and this one, where it just runs once, and we don't need to consider it. What we do need to consider is this for loop, this for loop, and this for loop. So inside our first encased for loop, we have one statement right here. So it's, this is going to be executed every single time our for loop here runs. Now we can note that our i is going to be equal to whatever value i is up here. So i is equal to 1 but it's going to go up to n minus 2. So we can represent i as n minus 2, and then we have this plus 4, so it's going to be plus 4, and that equals to n plus 2, which is really equal to n. The plus 2 doesn't matter since it's constant, so we're going to get an n in here. On our outside loop, this is going to run n minus 2 many times, which is basically the same as n. So we have both of our n's, and this is going to be about o n squared. For our second for loop, we just have one statement that executes 100 times. So this is just going to be o 1. And since this o n squared is bigger, this is our answer. For part b, we have int sum is equal to 0. That's just going to run once. We have the sys out, which is just going to run once. So we're not going to look at these. What we are going to look at are these four for loops. We have three encased, and then we have one on the outside that we're going to look at last. So for our first for loop, we have this running n times n times with just one statement inside of here. So we are going to have big O n squared because we have n times n, and in our um, second for loop, we're just going to have one statement as well, but this is going to run 100 times. Since it's constant, we're just going to have O1. For our next for loop, this is just going to have, this has one statement in it, and it's going to run n times. So we're having O, n, and then we need to combine a few things. So we need to combine this. This is just O1, so you don't need to worry about it, and we need to combine O of n. Combining these, we get O n cubed, and that is our final answer for part B. For part C, for part C, we're first going to look at our constants. So we have this is a constant, and this is a constant. It's only going to happen once. Now we're going to look at our for loops. We have one for loop right here. We have another for loop outside of that, and then we have another for loop down here. Let's look at the individual for loop first. We can see that we have one statement in here, but it's going to run at a finite time, 10,000 to be exact, which is O 10,000, but we can write this as one. For our inner for loop right here, we can see that we have one statement, and this is going to run a finite times of O 100, which is sum to one. Next, for our outer for loop, we see that we don't have any statements, but we are going to run this for an n amount of times. And since we're running it an n amount of times, basically this is what we're looking at, we are going to have an n. So this means we have an o n like this. And since o n is bigger than o1, which is right here, we have o n as our final answer. For part D, we have a few things that we can cancel out. First would be this and this. Not cancel out, but not look at since they're constant. In our for loop here, we are going to have one constant right here where we add this into our set. And we have n times 2, which is equivalent to n. So here we're just going to get O of n. For our next for loop, we have a for each loop. And in here, we are initializing this value k 
and then we are setting it equal to each set and every time we go through this loop we are going to go to the next index in the set so when we first go into this k is going to be set dot get k which would be zero so set dot get zero and then the next one would be set dot get one and then two and so on and so forth and what this is doing is it has a constant in here and this constant is going to be n because it's going to happen n times but this for each loop not 100 percent sure but my guess and this is correct for the question is that this is going to be a log n this for each loop is equivalent to log n for what we're doing right here so we can write this as this and then we can rewrite this as our answer which will be big o n log n and this is the answer for part d for e we have two constants one right here and one right here so we're not going to worry about these two what we are going to look at though oh actually we also have a third constant one right here what we are going to look at is these three loops first with our for loop we have one statement in here and it's being executed n plus 100 times this is roughly n times so that's going to be o n for all of this for this entire for loop it's just o n next we have our while loop and this is going to execute well vec dot is empty is not empty because of this not operator right here so basically everything that we're, we um, did in this first for loop all of the values that we stored in here we are going to add them into our stack so this and then we are then going to remove them from our array list vec this is one n so this is going to equal big o n for the entire loop for our last while loop we have one statement here and we're just running it while stack dot is empty so basically um since vec is empty this is running n plus 100 times and this is also going to run n plus 100 times so this is also o of n we can see that all of these are the same none of them are higher so our answer is just o of n